Beloved of God, praise him. Praise the Lord God, who is our Father. We appreciate God for all opportunity. Let us pray as we begin. Father God in heaven, we thank you for every opportunity that you have always given us. And we pray that this word will always give us the encouragement that we need at, at all times and the hope that we need in all places. And we pray the Lord you enable us to understand your word in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Beloved, my friends, we thank God for this time and thank you for taking off time. Thank you for flowing with us in, the, in these episodes of, you know, finding God. You give your time. You give your moments. You spare a moment to listen in, to tune in, and we appreciate God for you. And so we shall continue sharing together. It's God's word. And just like the Bible says his word is our light, that we keep walking in that light and so that all things could be for our good, but above all, for the glory of God. And so we keep reading through. We keep reminding ourselves of what the Lord God desires of us. Now, we have been looking at personalities, and we shall continue. Now, the person that we are at is Prophet Isaiah. We have looked at that book, and it has segments. And so we finish the segments, and then we shall pick some other two personalities that are in the book of Isaiah. And so that, like I've always said, that we read about these personalities, so that what they did, if it pleased God, shall we do the same that we can please God? Because in pleasing God, there are blessings. In pleasing God, his favor rests upon us. And so if they did bad, we also learn a lesson. There are personalities in the Bible that have done not good things, and God has reprimanded them, and he has warned them. And so what does it take? That actually when we read and we know the, the, what God does not want and we avoid it and we do what God wants for our own benefit, for our own good. And so we continue with Prophet Isaiah. I hinted at the beginning that Prophet Isaiah is divided into three parts. One portion is called First Isaiah. First Isaiah is the one that is called Proto Isaiah. Proto Isaiah spans from chapters 1 to 39 and he speaks their warnings their judgments like i said at the beginning now we did that and now we also did the second part of isaiah is called proto isaiah chapters 40 to 55 and now these spell out the words of hope words of encouragement and of course we talk about these people the jews the chapters 39 were warnings that if you do this, you obey, you eat the good of the land. You disobey, you are devoured by the sword. And indeed, it came true that because they were not doing right into the, in the eyes of God, they were taken into exile. Now, while they were in exile, that's Prophet Isaiah. Like he comes with a message of encouragement, actually bring them back on board. You know, God punishes, but God loves God can punish, but God loves. His punishment is not like the saddest way of doing things, jubilating over the death of a sinner, or jubilating over the suffering of a person. But God, his punishment is for retrieving. You bring back, you come back to your senses, and God does that. He says, come back, my children. Now, in Isaiah, Proto Isaiah, the message was hope. The message was you can do better. When you get back, may God do his part. Now, the third Isaiah, which we are doing now, is called Trito Isaiah. Trito Isaiah spans chapters 56 to 66. And it has been known that actually it is the least known part of the Bible because okay, many, many people dive so much into Isaiah chapters 40 to 55. There, because of the times that we are in, People need the message of hope. Yes, 
I need help. I need a message of encouragement. Because of the times that we are in now, Twitter Isaiah is the third part of Isaiah. And he is known as post-exilic. You know, these people had been taken into exile. And time comes, the message of hope comes, the message of encouragement comes. And indeed, these people, I mean, turn back to God. And God allows them to go back. Now, Twitter Isaiah is post-exilic. They are now back. Some of them are back. Some of them are still there. But it is actually a message that comes after exile. And they are the last 11 chapters from 56 to 66. And they are the least known, as I've already said. But the purpose, the purpose of Twitter Isaiah, in these chapters from 56 going on, because actually it talks about rewards for obedience to God. And just like it said so to those people, it also speaks the same to you, my brother, to you, my sister. It speaks the same to me, that with obedience there are rewards. But if there is disobedience, then like a parent who punishes his child because of the wrongs that are done, or rebuke, it may not necessarily be punishing or beating or doing what, but it can be a word of rebuke, can be a word of correction. Praise the Lord. That actually God desires this for us. Now this... Twitter Isaiah, he speaks about wanting to cause God's people to take their future seriously. And because the future holds a lot, it can be a future of hope, it can be, it can be a future of prosperity, it can be a future of brightness, it can be a future of great good things, basing on how you work today. Basing on how you worked yesterday, basing on how you believed God, basing on how you trusted God, basing on how you positioned yourself. And so you do things today. You work at your things today. You pray today. You trust God today. You believe God today. You do something today. But it points to tomorrow. So praise the Lord that actually this Twitter is higher causes God's people to take their future seriously. So if there is something that we talked about, talk about tomorrow, talk about next week, talk about next month, talk about next year. So Isaiah was pointing them that look at what happened in the past. Yes, you are here today. Maybe you are back because of was post exilic. Now that you are back in your homeland, what does the future hold for you? The reason why Basing on this, the most popular known, one of the most popular known portions is Isaiah chapter 60, which falls into Isaiah chapter 60, where he encourages them, encourages them. Isaiah 60 verse 1 says, Arise and shine, for your light has come. You know, they are back home, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For behold, the darkness will cover the earth, and he speaks many, many things there. So when he calls people to arise and shine, darkness all over, now he calls us, looking at what is going to happen next. So in this Twitter is I am, we have said actually people to take their future seriously. And if, for me, I picked a message here that even if we spoke on about this, but we need to look at what comes next. Because sometimes we get lost in what is happening now, in what we are eating now, in what we are drinking now, in what, whatever good that is, or even being taken up by whatever bad is now, whatever calamity is now. But we are called upon to raise our eyes above the bar and look ahead. Is it times of hardness? Is it times of goodness? But look ahead. And so one other thing that actually this person mentions is... The same thing actually looking to the future. And so the basic message, friends, is keep justice. Keep justice and do righteousness. Now, do righteousness. And which is directed to those who claim to be God's people. And I am sure all of us are. You and I are God's people. And so the message comes to us. So it is... In this portions, God is promises of salvation, praise the Lord. And salvation comes from the word save. Saving, of course, there are some other terminologies that are related 
redeeming, liberation, you know, bringing back, and things like that. So when it talks about God's promises of salvation, God's promises of joy, and of course the joy of the Lord is our strength, so says Nehemiah. God's promises of righteousness, God's promises of light, and God's promises of glory for those who are faithful. And so in Twitter Isaiah, he speaks out to this salvation, joy, you know, um, righteousness, light, glory for those that are faithful to God. So the Lord rejoices over his people that are faithful to him. It is actually something that actually we all treasure. That actually God is smiling over us. God is rejoicing over us. So in Twitter Isaiah, he tells them, now that you are back, now that you have settled back, now that you are back in your gardens, it's post exilic. Remember the times that you are in. Now focus on what pleases God. And so when he talks about God rejoicing over his people and promises them new heaven and a new earth, this is actually a prominent, there are prominent um, sayings in this street Isaiah, new heaven, new earth, focusing on what is coming next. And this refers us again to the book of Zechariah, one of the smaller prophets in the Bible. Zechariah chapter 3, verses 17. And the Bible says, The Lord your God is among you, pray the Lord. The mighty warrior who saves, he will take great delight in you. In his love, he will no longer rebuke you, but will rejoice over you with singing, will rejoice over you with gladness. Now, if we take a message like this, God rejoicing over his people, God rejoicing over our land, God rejoicing over our family, I look at myself and say, God rejoicing over my family. God rejoicing over my church. God rejoicing over my listener. Someone who actually watching, God rejoicing over you. It's actually something that is, you know, that brings joy, that makes the heart jubilate. And so we please God. But also, as we please God, it's for our own benefit. As we live in a society, we deal with the people, we connect with the people. We relate with the people. And so rejoicing or the joy that comes out of that is very, very important. So God will draw his people from all the earth because actually he talks about rejoicing. And so he draws them. He promises that he will draw them. He will bring them together. And so even if it doesn't happen when we are seeing or when we are not seeing, but God brings his people together. And you know, there are many, many ways of God bringing his people together. Pray the Lord, even when we sit and pray for one another, make a chain prayer is a way of bringing us together. You are here in Uganda. You are praying for someone in Rwanda. You are praying for somebody in Kenya. You are praying for, you are praying for someone in the Middle East where there are, you know, there are, the, the, life, the life is not so easy for those who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. The, you know, the thing is bringing together may mean also it can be physical coming together, but also coming together in prayer. So when we say that we're going to draw his people of all nations together, it is actually very important. So I just, and this is where God promises new things, new heaven, new earth. Look at Isaiah chapter 65 and see when he promises the new heaven and new earth. And you know, in new heaven and new earth, new place, people come together, people pray together, people sing together, people dance together. So Isaiah 65, verse 17, where he says, For behold, I create a new heaven and a new earth, and the former things will not be remembered or come to mind. Now, former things could be the nice ones, pray the Lord, but also former things could be the nasty ones that have robbed our peace. And so because we have these promises, we focus ourselves ahead. Just like we said at the beginning, that actually this street is there to cause people to take their future seriously. And so as we live today, as we eat today, as we drink today, you know, we need to know that actually a new day is coming. A new moment is coming. So as we look at what happens now, but also 
in eternity. We believe in you know, in the new heaven. We believe in a new earth, where all nations will come together. He will be one shepherd, shepherding one people. And so, friends, this is important. That actually, new heaven, new earth, and this keeps, you know, uh, reckon, being reckoned in all these chapters, 11 chapters of Twitter Isaiah. And chapter 66, verse 19, talks about survivors. Now, this is important. That if we are not taken away today, if we are not eaten up today, if what is happening has not taken us away today, then we talk about survivors. The people that survive. And the Bible is full of survivors, praise the Lord. Here, Daniel, we shall come to him sometime. But he was a survivor from the den of lands. Joseph, well, I will just be mentioning just names like that, not in the chronology, but you will hear, you know, that actually the Bible is full of survivors. And since it is full of survivors, could you be one of them? So that you are not taken up, you are not eaten up by the situation in which you are. Like Joseph was a survivor. We have talked about Joseph in our previous episodes. But he was retrieved from the hall, and as he's retrieved from the hall where his, bro his brothers had taken him, survival comes. He becomes a survivor in Egypt. He becomes a survivor until he reaches somewhere. Jeremiah himself was also a survivor. We shall come to him. And so, friends, when you talk about this, Isaiah chapter 66, verse 19, spelling out survivors, it is important. That actually we think about these things. Twitter Isaiah gives us a message. We read chapters 56 to 66. And pick what is encouraging to us. But also pick what is a warning to us. Because as he promises new heavens and new earth, we need to, what does it mean to wait for it? The reason why he's talking about doing righteous, which is directed to those, those, those who fear and trust in the Lord. So, friends, these chapters, God calls his people to think more and more seriously about the time to come. I've already noticed that. I've already said that, and I say it again. Now, remember that actually judgment awaits those who are obstinate, those who are rebellious, those who are stiff-necked. And we began with this actually from Isaiah chapter 1, verses 19, 20. Remember the good that the righteous will eat, but also the bad that the evil people will reap. Now, blessings will be upon those that are faithful. My prayer, friends, is that even when the majority in the world today do not do the right, do the right, when God went down to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, how many righteous people were there? And you know how Abraham pleaded for Sodom and Gomorrah? He pleaded, supposing you find there 50, supposing there, I mean, he came down up to 10. But when God went down, he did not find there 10. He finds only one family, the family of the man, Lot. Lot and his wife and his children. Now, praise the Lord, friends, that when God comes, when something is going to happen, may God find you the righteous one, even if you are alone on justice, even if you are alone on righteousness, even if you are alone on purity. So the righteousness of the righteous begins with repentance. He heals those who turn back to him. We read Isaiah chapter 64, Verses 6 and 9. You discover that actually God calls for repentance. 64, verses 6 to 9. 57, 17 to 8. Repentance of the, the righteous. He heals those who turn back. So it's a call to you. It's a call to everyone to turn back to God. Because Peter gives us one major thing also in the New Testament. When Jesus asked him, are you people going away from me? Now, Peter told Jesus, you know, people had eaten food and, you know, I mean, and now time comes, they want to do something and the more things were not coming. So people started deserting the Lord Jesus Christ. So Jesus turned and said, you people, you disciples, do you also want to go away? Peter said, Lord, to whom shall we go? It is you 
who has a words of eternal life. Pray the Lord. It's you who has words of eternal life. So friends, even when the world is getting, is getting um, astray, keep there, my brother, keep there, my sister, because God only desires the repentance of the unrighteous so, so that you gain your righteousness for your own good. So because with God, turning back to him is life, is health. And so Isaiah mentions many, many things here. And remember, one other portion of scripture that is quoted very, very um, widely is Isaiah chapter 59, verse 1. 59, he says, the hand of the Lord, this one we quote it most of the time, behold, the Lord is arm, the Lord's hand is not so short. That is, that it cannot save, nor is his ear so dull that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have made a separation between you and your God, and your sins have hidden his face from you so that he does not hear. For your hands are defiled with blood and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken falsehood. And this is, by the way, this is what has eaten up the generation. Falsehoods. Your tongue neuters wickedness. Someone praises God with the same tongue and then the following thing is not coming. It's wickedness. It's lies. And now, no one sues righteousness and no one pleads honesty. They trust in confusion. There are people who thrive on confusion and speak lies. They conceive mischief and bring forth iniquity. They had, you know, Isaiah in chapter 59 speaks things that happen, but his hand, so says the one that actually his hand is not short. His ear is not deaf. And one other thing that actually that amazes me in Twitter Isaiah is that actually in chapter 63, it is us actually who should come back to God from all ends of the earth. In chapter 63, verse 16, one of the, my favorites also here is that for you are our father. Though Abraham does not know us and Israel does not recognize us. You, O Lord, our Father, our Redeemer from all is your name. Pray the Lord. Now, I didn't live, I've not lived during Abraham's time, neither are you. We have not lived during Isaac's time, neither are you. We have not. But in this promises that even when, because we are too many, we are so many, but our Father is one, and that's God. And so, friends, this is just but an encouragement that in our various locations, in our various boundaries, in our various countries, in our various tribes, in our various churches, wherever we are, God is our Father. And so in the Twitter Isaiah, this comes out very clearly, that Abraham may not be knowing who we are, Isaac may not be knowing who we are, but God is our Father. So this is Isaiah chapter 60, um, 63, verse 16. And so this message that this man points to us really is an encouragement. And he says actually nobody has ever seen God like the Lord God. Yes, we have other gods that people worship, yes, but none of them is like the Lord our God. And that's like 64 verse 4. So this truth, friends, concern the steadfastness of hope. Hope points to the times that are to come. I just want to encourage us that actually even when the times are not so clear, shall we keep our hope? Shall we keep our hope? The hope of the times yet to come. I may not know what tomorrow is holding for me. Someone said that actually I may not know what the future is holding, but I know who is holding my future, praise the Lord. I know who holds it. I may not know what tomorrow will bring, I may not know what the next hour will bring, but I know in whose hands my tomorrow is, in whose hands my next moments are. And so, friends, this tweet Isaiah is an encouragement that God allows all 
God, God allows us to go through many situations, but he knows those who are his. You are his, I am his, all of us are his. But it also depends on how we relate with the God our Father. Therefore, friends, we pursue righteousness not only to earn salvation, not only to earn salvation, but it is a response. Our righteousness is a response to God's own righteousness that Christ has revealed. So we pursue righteousness even when the truth is fading away. Truly, truth is fading away. But the other question is, will God find faith on us? So treat Isaiah enabled us to keep our hope burning. We stir up one another. I'm here to mention this to you. But as I mentioned to you, I'm also hearing it. I'm also picking it. That actually we need to stir up one another. And God knows us by name. He knows you. He knows me. And so let us keep our light burning. And may God our Father, who has kept you up to this moment, who has kept me up to this moment, keep keeping you. And encouraging you to keep holding on for the hope. Let us pursue righteousness. Let us pursue justice. And so that actually we remain a people that are pleasing to God. And people that God will say, come on in my children, come on in my son, come on in my daughter. May God bless you and watch over you to keep your hope in him because the who holds your future in the name of God the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.